loài trung chăng? Everything. Everything. <cười> number one? Number. In Thailand nơi? Maybe number hundred. <cười> Welcome back to another DIY Bangkok street food tour in Talat Noi. All right, so today's video is sponsored by Brian Knapp. Now, Brian is one of my subscribers. He very generously supported this channel financially and asked me to do a little video around the lower end of Chinatown. So it's exactly where we are today. We're in Talat Noi, a small little Chinese Thai community right at the bottom end of what is known as Bangkok's Chinatown. Now this place, this place has been developed over the last few years but still retains a lot of like old school charm. So think small Chinese community meets hipster enclave. So you've got century old Chinese temples, you've got shop house restaurants churning out, third generation Thai street food classics. You've got shop houses come mechanics, motorcycle parts, engine parts, forklift trucks, bicycles, mopeds, you name it, they're fixing it. And then on the other side, you've got loads and loads of street art, you've got funky cafes, art galleries, restaurants on the Chao Praya River. You literally have a little something for everyone down here. But we are here today, as per usual, to find the most unique Thai dishes possible. And the first one I'm taking you to, a jellified, wibbly, wobbly pork leg stew, is probably the single most interesting dish I've ever come across in Thailand. Okay, so this is our first stop, the pork leg jelly at a place called Kamu Cha Yen Tu Ka Tang. Let's go. Ani, Ani, Kamu Cha Yen. Kamu Cha Yen Tu Ka Tang. Okay, Kam. Ao, Ao, Ao. Ah, Alai na, Pasa Thai Alai na. Alright, so they do a, they do a variety of different dishes here. We're gonna get the pork jelly. They've also got a nice pork leg stew. I'll go over there and show you that in a sec. What's she making? So I've ordered, I don't know what I've ordered actually. What do you have? Cup. All right, so I'm going to sit here. Everything. Everything. <laughs> number one? Number. In oh, Thailand, no. Maybe number 100. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because in this area. How uh, many, no? Uh, there are so many, many places uh, that uh, do good food. Yeah. Now, Indian food, Chinese food, and many, many, many. Yeah, yeah. I bought one, one bag already, oh. and I give to my friend. Oh. Ah, yeah. Then I come back and and, and then buy one, one bag for me. Ah, come on, come. This is going to come across as really, really rude, but this actually looks like dog food. Look at the jiggle on that. It does, doesn't it? It looks like a tin of dog food. What? Right, so she's given me some Chinese black vinegar. Um, and then also, she's told me if I like it spicy, I can try some of this. Pik Nam Som, which is like classic Khao Ka Moor sauce. But this looks a little bit thicker than your average chili vinegar. So this is the sauce that you would have with a normal Khao Ka Moor, even if it wasn't jelly. What I will say first of all, 
is I've never tried anything quite like it. Texturally, this is sort of in a world of its own. It's got chunks of stewed leg meat, like the actual, uh, like, you know, like when you get cow come and you get that almost pulled pork kind of consistency. It's got that in it, but then it's also got pieces of sliced pork skin and then this gelatinous jelly stock, which I'm told is not made with any sort of gelatin or agar agar, as they call it here, is literally just the natural gelatin from the pork skin. And then they refrigerate it and then it comes out like this block of jiggly, wiggly pork cake. All right, let's try the sauce. That was a bit funky for me. I'm gonna dip it in that vinegar. And then we're gonna get a nice bit of this. Oh, it's broken in half. Nice scoop of this. Chili vinegar. Mmm, all right. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. The consistency and like the texture is throwing me a little bit. The flavor's great, it tastes exactly how it sounds. It sounds like a refrigerated cow caramel jelly. So it's got the same flavor as a cow caramel, like pork stock, Chinese spices, spit cinnamon maybe. But this is very good. This fermented chili vinegar is absolutely incredible it is a lot better the little pork cake thing is a lot better when you dip it in a uh, in both these dips for sure well I'm not sure <laughs> I'm gonna be I'm gonna be totally honest I'm glad I came here because it's one of the most interesting things I think I've eaten in Bangkok, but I'm not gonna lie. Next time I think I'll just order this straight, unbelievable looking Khao Khao Mua. All right, next up, I've got four pad pick, so chili stir fried crab. So we've got pieces of lump crab meat. They're not massive, but they're not small either with which are green beans, some orange banana chilies, some red chili, loads and loads of garlic, some fried garlic, uh, some kapow leaves, some oyster sauce, a little bit of soy sauce, and I'm guessing a bit of sugar. All right, now that's very good. Okay, so this shop is third generation. They've been in this particular shop house for 70 years, but this is a hundred year old recipe. I'm told this is the only place in the area that does this. It's definitely the only place that I've ever seen this. It's super, super interesting. Whether I'd come back again to eat this particular dish, I'm not sure, but I would come back, get the crab, get a normal cow kamu. Love the vibe. It's just a classic open air shop house restaurant cooking out the front just how we like it. All right, so I'm gonna get paid up, find out how much this all costs, because I forgot to ask, inform you of that, and then we will get off for our duck. All right, so um, I just got the bill, and it was 160 for the cold pork and the crab. So actually, that wasn't too bad at all. I think I was being a little harsh on the dish. One, it just took me by surprise, and two, I'd read online it was 200 baht minimum for the, for the, and I thought 200 baht might be a bit expensive, but now 160 for both dishes, absolutely fine. And the, you know, I sat there and ate a little bit more of it, and the more I was eating it, the more I'm like, actually, this is really, really interesting and really unique, and they are the only place. Well, the lady said, as far as I can understand, they are the only place that does it, not the only place in Talat Noi, just the only place in general that she knows that actually does this dish, so. Look, if you want to go and come and try something a little bit different, I would definitely stick that on your list because like, it's not breaking the bank and it's a very, very unique dish. All right, uh, let's go and see if we can find some duck. Oh, all right, guys, disaster has struck. The duck shop's closed for a couple of days. All right, so this does happen. 
You can't always guarantee things are going to be open in Thailand. So, what to do now? I will find us somewhere else to eat, I promise you. Bear with me for two seconds. We might go and get the coffee first, then get the food after. Yeah, I've got a nice little coffee shop to take you to. Hold on. All right, this is what we're looking for, guys. It's signposted on every corner, pretty much. All right, we're almost there now. All right, so we're here, Hong Si and Kong. All right, so we've got it. 140, what? All right, they've also got lots and lots and lots of craft beer to try. Could, I can feel a little, a little session coming on another day. These are my new favorites as well, these Mai, Mai Tais, very good. All right, we've got to wait for someone to stand in front of this shit. What's on the cab? Cab. All right, so this is some place, look at this. Love it. Love all this exposed brickwork. Look, beautiful restored house. But you know where we're going, guys. We're going back out into the heat on the river. What a beautiful spot this has turned out to be. Honestly, one of the nicest coffee shops I think I've ever been in in my life. Coffee's not bad. It's not bad. It's not the best. Look, I, I think somewhere like this, you're coming here more for the um, more for the ambiance and the uh, and the views and the river views and stuff like this. And obviously, they've spent a hell of a lot of money renovating this place. They've obviously got to charge a little bit more than normal. And if you were on a on a on the Thames drinking a coffee in a place like this I, I, I dread to think how much it would cost if you were in London so um, I shouldn't moan about prices in Thailand should I see and I'm going back to uh, back to the UK on Thursday mm. yeah just not my kind of blend I would expect for 140 baht you'd have a, you'd be able to pick which blend you want but nah decent enough and uh, the view is very very nice very very nice um, I hope you enjoyed the first stop, and I apologize that the duck restaurant wasn't open. Um, what can you do? This is Bangkok. See, what I could do now, I could cut the video, and I know loads of people that do this, I've done it myself, cut the video, and then go back again and pretend like on Monday that it was still the same day and then put it all together as one, but that's not real life, is it? Because you're gonna come to Bangkok, and or Thailand in general, and you're gonna wanna go somewhere and you're gonna Find this out for yourself that some days for absolutely no reason whatsoever, that place you wanted to go is closed and you need to think of a plan B. So I've got a little place in mind where well, you're gonna get noodles there. So I'm gonna take you to another noodle place that I haven't been to in years and I think you're gonna really enjoy this one. Yeah, let's do it. Again, I feel like I've been harsh there on the coffee. There was nothing wrong with it. It was a nice cup of coffee. It just wasn't like the best coffee I've ever had. The staff on the other hand, as per usual, very, very friendly. Everyone very, very lovely and an absolutely beautiful place to just go and spend a couple of hours. Like I would go there with Helen without a problem. She'd absolutely love it there. Have no problem with a coffee. That's exactly the type of, type of coffee that Helen likes to drink. Now onto this next place. Uh, it's like some people might confuse this lady for Jay Fire because she also wears goggles. She also works over a very high wok flame, but this place is called Auntie Crazy. All right, so our last stop is going to be back up towards Chinatown Gate, which is handy for me because I just realized that's where I parked my car. So I can just get straight back in and drive off. But if you do want to get down here, I forgot to tell you your options. So you can get off at Hua Lampong MRT station, walk from there. You can probably walk from Wat Mangon as well. You can get off at Marine Department on the boat and walk from there. But as I said, there is a multi-story car park just by the giant red Chinatown gate 
and you can park in there for 30 baht an hour, so not too bad at all. So you've got Chinatown Gate, can't really miss it. Behind that, you've got a very famous temple with a golden Buddha that I can never remember the name of. Swing around, Cafe Amazon, 7-Eleven. Outside that, you've got Jer Ben, Pad Nyingyao, if I'm saying that right. All right, so there's a few different things to choose from. We can get suki, sukiyaki, radna, but I'm going to attempt to say pad nyingyao and see where it gets me because this is jebin nyingyao. All right, so last stop and uh what a day it's been i'm absolutely boiling it's so hot at the moment um days like this can be frustrating when you're kind of walking around and things aren't open um but i try not to let it bother me because there's always something else around the corner now as i said this is such a good little spot unfortunately um jeb ben has just told me not to film she's asked me not to film so i i've filmed here before um so i'm not sure why i'm not allowed to today but um yeah she's very adamant that i don't film so i will film myself eating it can't really get any footage of her cooking unfortunately but what can you do if uh, someone doesn't want you to film them you don't film them uh so yeah hopefully the noodles are as good as i remember them to be i think he's bringing over now oh he's not gonna let me film here either all right so i'll show you what i've got guys i am going to be able to film here i just can't film um, I just can't film them cooking, unfortunately, which is all good. Right, so we've got a little sauce here, like a gel sauce, which I'll explain to you in a sec. Two lovely, plump, juicy prawns. Marinated pork. A little bit of that. Then we've got this homemade pork cake, which she said it's like um, like a port ball, like a look tin, but just flat, and she's obviously made it herself, which is nice. Uh, dried shiitake mushroom. Then there's senyai, so that, uh, with eggs, so it's kind of like kwitiao uh, kuagai. Yeah, it's like a kuagai. Look at the char on these noodles, that is insane. Scrambled egg there, lovely. Right, the sauce is just fresh chilies garlic, vinegar and sugar, I'll put a bit of that on. All right, I'm not gonna lie, I got a little bit disheartened there when, um, when he said that I couldn't film and I thought he was coming to tell me I couldn't film again, but he wasn't, he just came to ask me a question. So, uh, oh, bottoms up. All right, the, the char on the noodles and the fried crispy garlic has just pulled today back for me. Oh, yes. Pork cake. Mm. It's like a, a mordang, mordang, not mo mordang, mordang. The bouncy pork you get in Tom Yum noodles. Mm. But with chives in as well. It's good, it's a little sweet. Mm. But very, very good. And these are just as good as I remember. The main flavour, as you'd expect, is coming from the from the wok, the char, the wok's breath, as we keep talking about. I'm going to get a little bit of chilli. need a bit more spice but the the chili vinegar is really really good very very sharp it's sweet but not to the point where I'm saying look like, that's overly sweet it's just it's got some sweetness to round off the flavor but it's mainly just spicy and sour and it complements this the smoky char and the noodles perfectly mm. all the meat is absolutely delicious Noodles are fantastic. I'll try a prawn. Mm. 
amazing. That's a top, top bowl of noodles. Mmm. Prawns, absolutely delicious. Yeah, yeah. I can't eat it now because I'm too full up, but I'll tell you what else I remember being incredible from here was the fried rice. I know what you're thinking, yes. Fried rice is fried rice, but the fried rice here is, is mega. But um, yeah, thank you to my, my long-term buddy, Adam Beach, you know, for the suggestion for this place back in the day. Still the only other person I know that's been here because um, it was so long ago I did a video here. I think about seven people watched it, but I will link it if you want to watch it. It's a terrible video. But yeah, guys, this has probably been, what, 25 minutes already? You're probably sick of the sight of me by now. So I'm going to stop waffling on. Say thank you again to Brian Knapp for donating for this video. If you want to shout out, you want to donate some money, um, help fund this channel, so I don't have to use sponsors, etc., etc. then you can do so with the links below. I've stuck a PayPal link in there now, uh, and I think that's gonna work out a little bit better for all of us uh, if you use that link rather than the buy me a coffee, but whatever you wanna use. I appreciate it dearly. If you can't afford or don't want to support the channel financially, absolutely fine, but please continue to like and share the videos. Let's get everyone seeing these videos and let's get everyone out eating more local Thai food. All right, that about wraps things up for today. As always, I will leave links with everywhere I've been in the description box below. If you want to see me go back to those duck noodles that I missed, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll try and get that done. For now, I'm going to slip off into a food coma. So I'll see you guys in the next one.